Senior Sustainability Consultant at CADS Group. And today I'll be giving a brief introduction on applying the performance solution process. With the much needed introduction of more stringent energy provisions, with new technology and products on the market, with the increased uptake of best practice industry benchmarks, we are coming across more diverse and technical solutions for compliance and the increased use of performance solutions. As part of its efforts to encourage the increased and competent use of performance solutions, the ABCB has produced a number of guidelines and educational materials to support performance solutions use. More recently, a new provision, A2.2 Section 4, the process for developing and documenting performance solutions has been included into the National Construction Code. It has been introduced into the NCC 2019 Amendment 1 with an implementation date of the 1st of July 2021. This instructional video will provide background information on the application of performance solution with respect to energy efficiency. It will outline the methodology for documenting a performance solution in line with A2.2 section four, and it will apply it to an energy efficiency case study. Firstly, some background information on the use of performance solutions to meet performance requirements. Performance solutions are satisfied by one of the following. A performance solution, a deemed to satisfy solution, or a combination of the two. A performance solution, our focus for today, is achieved by demonstrating compliance with all the relevant performance requirements, or demonstrating that the solution is at least equivalent to the deemed to satisfy provisions. So when applying this to Section J energy efficiency provisions, on your screen, you can see an example of applicable performance requirements. These performance requirements can be achieved by either a performance solution using a verification method as the assessment method, as you can see on the screen. Or a deemed to satisfy solution. The performance solution must be shown to comply with the relevant performance requirements through one or a combination of the following assessment methods. Evidence of suitability in accordance with part A5 of the governing requirements that show the use of materials, products, plumbing and drainage products, form or construction or design meets the relevant performance requirements. A verification method, including the verification methods provided in the NCC, for example, JV3 verification using a reference building or other verification methods accepted by our appropriate authority that show compliance with the relevant performance requirements. Expert judgment and comparison with the deemed to satisfy solutions are two other assessment methods. The process for undertaking a performance solution in line with provision A2.2 section four involves the following steps. Firstly, you wanna prepare a performance-based design brief. This is in consultation with relevant stakeholders and the appropriate authority. So it may include the architects, service consultants, building certifiers, the client, 
or relevant experts in a specific field, for example, energy and fire. The brief is to include a minimum of three sections. A scope of works for the performance-based analysis, the technical basis for analysis, and the acceptable criteria of the relevant performance solution as agreed by the stakeholders. Once the brief has been prepared, you want to carry out analysis as documented in the brief, and then evaluate the results against the acceptance criteria in the brief. And finally, we want to put this into a report that includes at least all performance requirements and deemed to satisfy provisions identified in the brief, and identification of all assessment methods used, the details of step one to three of the brief as seen on the screen, and confirmation that the performance requirements have been met, and details of any conditions or limitations if they exist regarding to the performance solution. Let's now apply this uh, to a case study. So we'll be using a simple petrol station in South Australia, NCC Climate Zone 5. The consultant group undertook a Section J review of the design of a proposed petrol station in Australia, South Australia, in NCC Climate Zone 5. An initial deemed to satisfy assessment has deemed the floor as non-compliant with J1.6 floors. The required total R value of the floor to comply is two. The current R value when applying table 2B, R value in soil in contact with the floor of specification 1.6 subfloor thermal performance is 1.4. So the floors are deemed to be non-compliant. The stakeholder group being the architect, the client, service consultants, sustainability consultant and building certifier meet to determine if the uninsulated floor has a significant impact on the heating and or cooling loads of the building compared to another building with deemed to satisfy elements to things such as the walls, roof and glazing. The stakeholder group agreed to undertake a whole building model to test the impact of the insulated floor as on the petrol station in comparison with other building elements. The stakeholder agree, group agree that all other deemed to satisfy provisions can be met. The group agree on undertaking a thermal comfort analysis to make sure thermal comfort is achieved a predicted mean vote or a PMV of negative one to plus one is to be achieved across not less than 95% of the floor area of all occupied zones for not less than 98% of the annual hours of operation of the building. So step one, we want to prepare a performance based design brief, which includes a scope of works. The scope of works proposed by the stakeholder group is to analyse, undertake analysis to test whether the heating and cooling loads for the proposed building with no floor insulation is less than that of a reference building with deemed to satisfy compliant walls, ceilings, floors and windows. It is proposed that the performance solution is achieved by demonstrating the solution is at least equivalent to the deemed to satisfy provisions. And as such, comparison with the deemed to satisfy provisions is used as the assessment method. We then identify the technical basis for analysis. In this case, the consultant intends to utilize IES BE energy modeling to calculate the annual load of the building which has been approved for the use for this purpose being compliant with ASHRAE 1400 2007 best test. The modeling software will be used to demonstrate equivalency with section J building fabric when with added compliance for additional deemed to satisfy provisions not covered by a model solution, including 
for general thermal construction, compliance with J1.2, and the building ceiling of the building to comply with J3. All other provisions not co covered by the modelled solution, including J5 to J8, will be designed compliant with a DTS solution. We then identify the criteria, criteria for acceptance. That is what needs to be met to demonstrate either compliance with all the relevant performance requirements, or the solution is at least equivalent to deem to satisfy solutions. In this instance, we provide, we propose that under 2.2 section one, the performance solution is achieved by demonstrating the solution is at least equivalent to the deemed to satisfy provision and the remaining clauses in A2.2. When we undertake the analysis, the results of the load analysis undertaken through IES software being on your screen, modelled inputs are per specification JVB and GVC. We then evaluate the results identified in step 1b, the technical basis for analysis, against the step C acceptance criteria in the performance-based design brief. The analysis demonstrates the difference in performance between the proposed building load and the reference building, i.e. DTS fabric, allows for a quantifiable comparison of the building's fabric performance as a whole. In addition, comfortable le levels are achieved throughout the year. In addition to this, the following deemed to satisfy assessment was achieved to reduce limitations in the software. This includes for general thermal construction J1.2 and the building ceiling of the building to comply with J3. The building services to be designed in accordance with deemed to satisfy provisions of parts J5 to J8. We then compile the data and create our report, which should include, as a minimum, all performance requirements and deemed to satisfy provisions identified as applicable, identification of all assessments methods used, record of details from the brief relating to steps A to C des described before, confirmation that the performance requirements have been met, and details of conditions of limitations, if any exist, regarding the performance solution. Comfort may have been impacted and the group agree on undertaking a thermal comfort analysis to make sure thermal comfort is achieved. A predicted mean vote of negative one to plus one is to be achieved across not less than 95% of, of all occupied zones for not less than 98% of the annual hours of operation of the building. In summary, the process for undertaking a performance solution in line with provisions A2.2 section four involved the following steps. One, prepare a performance-based design brief. This is in consultation with re relevant stakeholders being the architect, service co consultants or client and involves the following, a scope of work, the technical basis for analysis and the acceptance criteria of a relevant performance solution. Two, we want to carry out the analysis as per the proposed brief. Three, we want to evaluate the results against the acceptance criteria of the brief. And four, we want to prepare a final report. In closing, there is further supporting resources, including a guidance document and handbook, which are available on the ABCB website in the resource library. Thank you for your time.